Good evening, I'm Paul Fraser and this is the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa issued Decree 5 of 2018 amending some provisions of Decree 11 of 2014 regarding the establishment and organisation of the National Space Science Agency. Article 1 replaced the definition of Minister with the Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications. Article 2 stipulated the establishment of the National Space Science Agency under the control and supervision of the Minister, who will issue the regulatory code for the agency's job affairs at the suggestion of the Civil Service Bureau, without breaching the provisions of the Civil Service Law issued by Law Decree 48 of 2010 and Law Decree 36 of 2011 that regulates the salaries and benefits of staff of government directorates and institutions. The provisions of Law 13 of 1975 shall apply to the agency staff regarding retirement and pensions of government employees according to the amendment. The Prime Minister and each of the Ministers, according to their domain, have been tasked to implement this decree, which becomes effective from the day following the date of its publication in the official Gazette. His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakhir Palace in the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa, the UK Ambassador to the Kingdom, His Excellency Simon Martin, who introduced Scottish community members in Bahrain to His Majesty the King. Traditional Scottish music was played welcoming His Majesty the King.
Your Majesty, Your Highnesses, Your Excellencies and esteemed guests, good afternoon and welcome. The Kingdom of Bahrain and the United Kingdom have shared a strong, warm and long-standing relationship over the years and a particularly strong bond has historically existed between the Scottish and Bahraini communities. The Scots have long had a second home in Bahrain and have been an integral part of our society. They have contributed to the development and progress of our beloved country, and we hope that this bond will only strengthen and continue to grow in the future. Ladies and gentlemen, His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. Your Excellency Ambassador, honored guest, it is a great pleasure to meet you all and to continue the bonds of friendship between our nations, which stretches back over centuries. For hundreds of years, the people of Scotland and Bahrain have worked and socialized together. The Kingdom of Bahrain has always had an immense respect for the achievements of the United Kingdom, which have only been possible through the hard work of your countrymen and women. 
The people of Scotland are renowned for traveling the world to seek new opportunities. And we are delighted that you are continuing that tradition here in Bahrain. Thank you for bringing your expertise and your talents to our country. We deeply appreciate the part you are playing in our institutions and in Bahrain economy. And we hope you feel very much at home here. Indeed, I know that for many of you, Bahrain has become your home. Though our nations may be different, we have much in common. Both Bahrain and Scotland are driven by great ambitions and the highest values and aspirations. Both are proudly patriotic, and yet both embody a spirit of tolerance in which we celebrate all communities and traditions as well as our own. Speaking of tradition, it seems right to mention the celebration of Burns Night, which I know took place a few nights ago. In honor of your renowned national poet, let me promise that in the case of Bahrain and Scotland, old acquaintances will never be forgot. Thank you once again for your commitment to Bahrain, your loyalty to our people, and your ongoing friendship. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The UK ambassador to the kingdom delivered the following speech. I'd like to welcome His Excellency, Mr. Simon Martin, the British ambassador to Bahrain. Your Majesty, please allow me on behalf of the members of Bahrain's Scottish community here today to thank you for your kind invitation and for this wonderful initiative to honor the contribution of Scotland and the Scots to your kingdom. Only you, sir, would have thought to entertain us with a pipe band. The relationship between the UK and Bahrain is, I believe, a unique one. We have so many shared interests and so many shared elements to our history. All of this was so vividly highlighted by the recent celebration of the 200 years of our, former, our formal relationship your Majesty, when I first arrived to take up my post, you encouraged me to approach the 2016 bicentenary with enthusiasm and energy. In fact, you set us the target of organizing 200 events to commemorate the 200th anniversary. I'm glad to say we managed even more than 200. And during that bicentenary year, we celebrated our cultural ties, our commercial relationship, our historic collaboration in the defense field and our shared defense and security challenges in the present day. We also highlighted all of the wonderful things going on in education, and above all, we honored the extraordinary personal links that exist between the people of our two countries. Your Majesty, if I may say so, your focus on the role of Bahrain's Scottish community is a very appropriate one. I do not want to steal the thunder of the chieftain of the Owali Caledonian Society who will follow me but it's very telling that the society was formed in Awali, the home of Babco. For many Scottish oil men and women have contributed to the development of Bahrain's oil industry, and they continue to do so to this day. Now, of course, these days the Scottish oil and gas industry is famous throughout the world, but how amazing that the Scots came here in such force to help develop Bahrain's oil industry many decades before they discovered their own. It was no doubt the Scots who brought us golf in Bahrain, and it was certainly a most famous modern-day Scots 
Colin Montgomery, who designed the fiendish course that confronts us at the Royal Golf Club today, which has benefited so much from your support, sir. And there are many other wonderful historic links between our these two countries and nations, by which, of course, I mean Bahrain and Scotland. But I should like, however, to focus on the present day. It is clear from the community of Scots here today, Your Majesty, just how large and vibrant is their presence in your kingdom. Scottish men, women and children, all of whom in their different ways are woven into the fabric of Bahraini society, contributing to your country's development and enjoying in equal measure your country's famous, famously warm hospitality. Businessmen and women, teachers, artists, leaders of community organizations, students, and dare I say it, even diplomats, for despite the southern accent, I am proud to claim in my blood to be at least half Scottish myself. And the connections are equally strong in the other direction. Many Bahrainis are frequent visitors to Scotland. Your Majesty's own honorary membership of the Royal and Ancient Golf Club is testament to your own affection for Scotland as well as for golf, as is the existence of a Royal Bahrain Tartan, resplendent in the red of the Bahraini flag and the blue of the saltire, commissioned personally by His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince. And there are no end of Bahrainis who have braved the climatic gulf to study at some of the UK's finest universities, such as Edinburgh, Glasgow, and St. Andrews. But Your Majesty, I wonder if it would surprise you to know that one in a thousand of your subjects has graduated in the last 12 years as a Master of Business Administration from the University of Strathclyde. A, a wonderful example of the current contribution that Scotland makes to Bahrain. These Scottish Bahraini graduates are already to be found across the business and government sectors in Bahrain, making, I believe, a really substantial contribution to the economic and wider reform and development which I know is so important to Your Majesty's vision of the future. So, Your Majesty, the links between Scotland and Bahrain continue to grow, and it is a source of great pride to me as British Ambassador that you should wish to honour the Scottish community in your kingdom. From all of us, sir, uh, thank you. Thank you, Ambassador Simon. We welcome Mr. Ewan Riki, Chieftain of Dawali and Menama Caledonian Society. Your Majesty, Your Highnesses, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, fellow Scots and friends of Scotland, on behalf of the Awali and Manama Caledonian societies and our Scottish communities, I would like to thank Your Majesty for honouring us with this kind invitation and welcoming us all here today. I would like to say a few words about Bahrain and why we Scots choose to live here with our families. What is home? It might be the taste of your mother's cooking, or maybe it's when you read to your children at bedtime. Perhaps it's sharing a meal with friends around a noisy dinner table, or simply having tea in the peace and tranquility of your own garden. It's the people we work, socialise and relate to, our personal possessions, and ultimately the place where we decide to live, that not only defines us as individuals, but also forms our home. And for many Scottish people from diverse professions, backgrounds and all walks of life, Bahrain is home. And what do I put it down to? I think it's down to the freedoms of religion and culture that are extended to us. Our safe home and work environment and social life that we have here in Bahrain. I am fortunate to work for BAPCO and I work for many different nationalities and cultures. And I can tell you there is no end of, to the friendly nature of the Bahrainis. And for some strange reason, they have a liking for us Scots. It is the Bahraini people with their warm hearts who make us feel at home. I have also travelled overseas many times with the This Is Bahrain delegation. And I know personally this diverse group of individuals of all nationalities, and they are also very proud to call Bahrain their home. So it's not just us Scots. His Excellency, the British Ambassador Simon Martin, hosted a gathering of Scots at the Embassy in celebration of St Andrew's Night last year. 
and I too was delighted to see so many Bahrainis that were invited to the celebration. I wondered why so many Bahrainis attending a Scottish celebration, and as it turned out, they had studied at either one or more of our brilliant universities, were either working in Scotland or enjoyed some other link with Scotland, of which they were all very proud of, which was marvellous for us to see. Your Majesty, we are very grateful for the freedom bestowed upon us to form our clubs and societies. And the Awali Caledonian Society celebrated its 82nd St Andrew's Ball last year. And we have just had our 83rd Burn Supper last week. So I think you could say that we're here to stay. We would like to extend an invitation to all Scots, friends of Scotland, but especially our Bahraini friends, to come and join our Caledonian societies. As just like the Kingdom of Bahrain, we welcome everyone and rejoice in our diversity. Your Majesty, once again, we, ex we Scots express our deepest gratitude for your gracious hospitality. Thank you and good afternoon. A gift was presented to His Majesty the King on behalf of the Scottish community. A band then played traditional Bahraini music. The representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports and Chairman of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, affirmed that the Kingdom, in line with the vision and directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, is committed to making global youth the basis for achieving sustainable development goals set by the United Nations, noting that His Majesty the King has always launched initiatives that focus on supporting and creating youth innovations for their importance in directing youth energies towards achieving the goals of sustainable development. His Highness Sheikh Nasser added that the King Hamid Youth Empowerment Award to achieve sustainable development goals has attracted the world after the success of its first edition. He expressed appreciation for the efforts exerted by the Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs in cooperation with the Economic and Social Council and the United Nations Development Programme in the Kingdom to ensure the success of the awards first edition. The Interior Minister, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, met British Home Secretary Amber Rudd in the course of his official visit to the United Kingdom. The Ambassador of Bahrain to the United Kingdom, Sheikh Fawaz bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, and the delegation accompanying the Interior Minister also attended the meeting. The UK Home Secretary welcomed the Interior Minister and praised the distinguished ties between the two countries. She also supported Bahrain's stances and affirmed that Britain is ready to continue constructive cooperation with the Kingdom in security fields. 
The Interior Minister appreciated the proactive counter-terrorism initiative by Home Secretary Rudd, referring to her request to the UK Parliament to classify outlawed Bahraini groups as terrorist organisations. He said the security cooperation between the two countries was historical. The Interior Minister briefed the Home Secretary on the security situation in Bahrain and the terrorist threats it faced, especially with the increased spread of terrorist acts and the diversity of methods adopted to execute them. The minister added that fugitive terrorists living in Iran stand behind those crimes in terms of planning and implementation for which they receive support and financing from the Iranian Revolutionary Guard, thereby training terrorists in the use of weapons and bomb making. The Interior Minister agreed with his UK counterpart to review the bilateral security agreement so as to support cooperation related to training and exchange of information, especially about new crimes. They also affirmed their understanding of the security risks posed by social media, especially when used to promote sedition, incitement and criminal acts. The meeting also reviewed cooperation and coordination in the fields of security and general safety and the exchange of information in various fields, in addition to issues of common interest and regional developments. The Interior Minister also met a number of British MPs. He was welcomed by Lord John Astor and the Deputy Chairman of the Conservative Party, Rahman Chishti, and a member of the Internal Affairs Committee, Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah, thanked the MPs for the important meeting, while the MPs welcomed his visit, which is part of the continued interaction and exchange of views. They expressed appreciation of the positive steps taken by Bahrain, praising existing Bahrain-UK ties. The MPs also thanked the Kingdom for hosting the UK Naval Facility Headquarters and the distinguished ties between the two countries dating back 200 years. The Minister also praised the strong historic ties which he said marked the foundation to reinforce cooperation and move towards counter-terrorism efforts. He also appreciated the high level of security cooperation and thanked the UK Parliament for classifying outlawed Bahraini groups as terrorist organisations. He said this could prompt others to take similar steps against terrorist organisations and groups working against Bahrain's security and stability as parts of international counter-terrorism efforts. The Interior Minister briefed the MPs on the security situations in Bahrain and the challenges facing its counter-terrorism efforts. He held an open discussion with them covering issues of common interest. Uh, today we had, we're very fortunate to have His Excellency Sheikh Rashid, the Interior Minister of Bahrain, uh, come to Parliament, speak to members of the House of Lords and members of the House of Commons, looking at all aspects of uh, United Kingdom Bahrain relationship, um, specifically touching on security. The first duty of the state, whether it's in Bahrain or the United Kingdom or the United States, is to protect your citizens. And I know our two great countries are working very closely on uh, security cooperation, protect our mutual citizens. And I know recently in Parliament, uh, the government has prescribed certain uh, organisations. And that quite clearly shows our strong collaboration between our two great countries on matters of security. And only recently, you know, we had a parliamentary delegation of uh, four members of parliament visit your great country, where we met with uh, the interior ministry, we met uh, with uh, your foreign affairs officials, and we went to, you know, places like the cathedral in Bahrain, the, the synagogue and the temple, because I think there's a difference between perception and reality. So for us, it was great to visit your great country, to meet with all the different stakeholders and see what a wonderful country it is. And today, it was very good to have Sheikh Rashid here talking about all aspects of security and cooperation. I know he is meeting with our Home Secretary, Amber Rudd, uh, after our meeting, and I know they will further discuss all aspects of security, and whether it's on trade, whether it's on security, uh, whether it's with uh, looking at um, the UK, uh, Bahrain, people-to-people -people, uh, movement, we have very strong relationships, and I think today's meeting with uh, Sheikh Rashid, alongside your wonderful ambassador, Sheikh Fawaz, uh, was very helpful in taking forward uh, the interests of our two great countries. 
Following the directives of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister to allocate and distribute 4,800 housing units in all the Kingdom's governments, the Ministry of Housing continued the electronic draw procedures for citizens who will benefit from the Northern City Housing Project. In a presentation, the Ministry pointed out that the Northern City is designed to be connected to a number of main entrances to accommodate the traffic of residents and visitors of the area, taking into account providing paths for pedestrians and bicycles, as well as a number of facilities. The CEO of the Supreme Council for the Environment, Dr. Mohammed Mubarak bin Dana, met yesterday with affiliates from the first Deputy Premier Fellowship Programme. That's the FDPM Fellowship. During the meeting, Dr. bin Dana said that the investment in manpower is the basis of development in all fields in Bahrain. Bin Dana praised His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, for his support to the national cadres. He pointed out that the launch of the FDPM Fellowship is an ambitious and positive model that contributes in developing and encouraging the national cadres to implement the program's outcomes in various sectors. He noted that the program, with the support given to it, is considered one of the vital programs that Bahraini youth from the government sector are keen to join due to the skills that it provides which enhances their expertise. Bendena pointed to the role played by the Supreme Council under the chairmanship of His Majesty the King's personal representative and the President of the Supreme Council for the Environment, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and His Highness's efforts to preserve the environment based on the Kingdom's constitution. He also asserted that preserving natural resources requires coordinated efforts and the spirit of teamwork from the concerned authorities in the private and public sectors. He further underscored the role of the Supreme Council for the Environment in bolstering awareness regarding the environment to all the components of society. Dr. Ben Dana presented the vision and message of the Council to preserve the environment, maintain its natural resources and develop it for future generations.